Hey guys, this is Tim Starnes from CineSamples. By now I've created many installments in a series of basic mixing tutorials designed for composers. You can check them out on YouTube as you need them. In this video, I focus on the two most essential principles of mixing audio, signal flow and gain structure. Achieving proper signal flow is creating the most efficient path of an audio signal from its source to the final mix. Achieving proper gain structure is maintaining a healthy signal level for each source throughout its signal path. Here's a basic example. You may have several stereo stems that are all routed to a stereo master bus. This is a simple form of signal flow. In order to achieve proper gain structure, the volume of the stems must be adjusted so that the loudest part of the piece rises as close to 0 dB as possible without going over. In this example, each stem is bussed to 11 and 12, which is received by the master bus. All stems are grouped together so I can change the volumes of all the tracks with one adjustment. I've determined that the loudest point is this accent around bar 24. I'm sure every DAW has a way to check the peak level. On Pro Tools, command click the volume twice and then play. The peak level at this particular place is minus 2.8 dB. I can raise all the stems by about 2.4 dB and still remain just under zero dB. This is now the most efficient gain structure because I'm using all 24 bits of digital audio. If you tend to print your stems loud, you may have to reduce the stems volume to bring the master bus under 0 dB. If the piece of music happens to be one cue within a film score, then the stems of the loudest cue must be adjusted so its loudest part rises as close to 0 dB as possible without going over. Then all subsequent cues must receive the same volume adjustment in order to maintain a consistent relative volume throughout the score. If you want to add reverb to a stem within the mix, the best way is to insert a reverb plugin on an aux bus and then send the signal from the stem to that aux bus. Unless you need complete reverb saturation, this is the best signal flow because the dry signal path of some plugins is not as pure as the original source signal. I'm gonna send these three percussion stems to the reverb just as an example. signal from the reverb aux bus is routed to the master bus in addition to the stems. This increases the overall gain and may cause the loudest part to go over 0 dB. So you may need to readjust the volume of all stems. Reverbs can act differently each time. Now since the reverb send from the stem is post fader, and dependent upon the volume of the track, the dry signal to reverb ratio will be maintained. Adding plugins to a stem can also change its gain structure. Applying subtractive EQ will lower the gain of the signal. Therefore, you'll need to raise the output of the EQ to compensate and return to the same loudness level. The opposite happens for additive EQ. Some EQ plugins compensate automatically. Afterward, you may discover that the EQ setting is not good because the gain increase compensation exposed too much of the frequencies that were not reduced. Many plugins come with presets that add an effect and increase the gain to make you think the result is good. Please be aware of this. You should judge the effect only, not the gain increase. So set the output of the plug-in so that bypass and active states sound roughly the same loudness. Then you can accurately judge the effect.
Sometimes you might think you need a compressor, for example, but when the loudness levels are the same, you may discover the compressor makes the sound worse. Gain structure is important when adding more than one insert on a stem. I'm just going to try some random combination of effects to illustrate the point. Every insert you add, you must maintain the same relative loudness level bypassed and active. So there's no need to change the input level of the compressor. Since we have already set the output of this compressor so its bypass and active loudness levels match, you only need to ensure the output of the plug-in prior to it is set the same way. Let's say you have a few stems that need the same EQ and compression settings. Efficient signal flow is routing them all to one submaster bus and applying one EQ and one compression plugin to the submaster bus rather than separate EQs and compressors for each stem. When adjusting the volume of all tracks heading to the master bus, include this submaster. Once the individual tracks are bussed to a submaster, do not touch the volumes of them. This will destroy the tone established by your gain structure through any plug-ins on the submaster bus. For example, if there's a compressor on the submaster bus, lowering the volume of the individual stem tracks will reduce the input to the compressor and as a result, there will be less gain reduction or compression, which will reduce the output loudness level and alter the tone. When the loudest part of the piece reaches close to 0 dB on the master bus without going over, you have achieved the most efficient gain structure. At this point, you have two options. Number one, only add a protective limiter to prevent any signal accidentally going over 0 dB. 
and then allow yourself or someone else the flexibility to master and perhaps revise the master without returning to the mix. Set the threshold to 0 dB and the ceiling to minus 0.5 dB so that other platforms like Avid, Final Cut Pro, and other DAWs will not register any overs. Each platform has its own sensitivity levels. The second option is to use plugins on the master bus so that you mix and master in one step. The usual order of plugins on a master bus is harmonics, EQ, compression, then limiting. Limiting is always last. Again, do your best to set the output of each plug-in on your master bus so that each maintains the same loudness level, bypassed and active. This is more difficult on the master bus. Just get as close as possible. Then check your loudest points again and allow the limiter 1 dB or so of gain reduction at the peaks for a loud but natural sound. I'm sure you're aware each plug-in affects all stems in the mix. For example, if you're adding some air in the EQ, every stem gets the same frequency boost. While most stems may benefit, there might be one or more stems that sound worse with that master bus EQ added. If it's only one or two stems that sound worse, while the majority of the stems benefit, those one or two stems may need individual EQ treatment so that the master bus EQ can make an improvement to all stems. Efficient signal flow is also inserting the fewest possible plugins. Instead of inserting air EQ on all stems except one, insert the EQ on the master bus and compensate on the one stem that doesn't need it. I hope that this has shed some light on some mixing mysteries for you. Stay tuned for more.